Okay, so I was listening to Jordan Peterson's Maps of Meaning the other day, and I started with number 10. Um, yeah, I started at the end, started at the end, where he talks about the fall of man, and he, and he draws a parallel between the fall of man and the Buddha. Now, I'm not entirely convinced that there's a strong parallel between the fall of man and the Buddha, but... I was really, really interested in his take on the subject of the fall in the Garden of Eden. And I, you, uh, if you are interested in the Bible at all or interested in the subjects that we are talking about, I strongly represent, recommend that you check out Jordan Peterson's videos on the subject. Uh, the Maps of Meaning videos are really, really, really good. So, Jordan Peterson is trying to f f is analyzing the fall of man from the point of view of the metaphor of the story, the underlying metaphysical substrate, as he would say. And one of the things that Jordan Peterson has taught us, or at least helped us to see more clearly, if you, if you were an atheist and you were of the mind that, you know, the Bible is just a book of fairy tales written by idiots for imbeciles, you know, you can latch on to Jordan Peterson, he helps underscore the fact that there is profound psychological truth Profound psychological truth revealed in the stories of the Bible. They tell us a lot about who we are as a people and give us spiritual insights into the moral condition of humankind or the spiritual condition of humankind. Much different way of reading the Bible. Much more effective, much more useful, ultimately a lot more honest. Grappling with a 2,000 year old text that still speaks to us today with actual sincerity of why does it still speak to us today? There must be something important buried in here. And he tries to ferret it out and does a really, really good job on some levels. So, let's take a look at his analysis of the fall of man. Now, first thing to notice in the fall of man, what is the actual fall? Well, Adam and Eve do what? They eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that's very important right there. That tells us something about morality. The fall of man has something really strongly to do with morality. Now, before we start off, let's just think about something for a second. Nature itself is amoral. Nature is amoral. A lion eats a zebra, as I pointed out before. We do not put the lion on trial for murder. He's just doing what lions do. He's hungry. He's got to eat something. Might as well eat the zebra. So the lion eats the zebra. Now, let's take, for example, my sweet little kitty cat. Sweet little cat right here. I swear to God, the sweetest thing you've ever seen on this earth. The sweetest thing you've ever seen on this earth. I promise you. I kid you not. I swear to God, it's the sweetest cat you've ever seen in your life. Now, she's the sweetest thing on earth. But not to a mouse. <laughs> not to a mouse. And to a mouse, she's almost pure evil. You know, we're watching, my wife and I are watching her. Oh, look, honey, she found a mouse. How cute. She's batting it back and forth. She's actually torturing the thing to death. <laughs> she's batting it. We're like, oh, how sweet. So she found a mouse to play with. The mouse is like, ah, ah, I hate this cat. She's a monster. She's pure evil. It's literally torturing the mouse to death. It's almost unimaginably cruel if you're the mouse. <laughs> but we don't hold the cat accountable. I tell you with a clear conscience, she is the sweetest thing on the face of this earth. And if you saw her, you'd completely agree with me. Even if you saw her killing a mouse. So, what's going on? Well, according to Jordan Peterson, what's happening is when, when Adam and Eve partake of the tree, they are becoming self-conscious. The cat has no moral awareness whatsoever. It's not conscious of what it is doing. Therefore, innocent. Now, another way of thinking about it that I've talked about in some of my other videos, when they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the fall, so the fall is either represented by human consciousness, us becoming self-conscious, or another way of thinking about it is we decide for ourselves good and evil. Prior to us partaking of the tree, we were basking in the presence of God morning, noon, and night. Now, we also weren't self-conscious, so both readings are correct. And God was deciding for us right and wrong. We were basking in the glory of God. Either way, either reading is correct. The fall is some sort of moral awakening wherein we have started to become self-conscious and decide for ourselves right and wrong. Now, why does the fall happen? Let's go to the snake. 
standard atheist teaching on the subject, they'll say, well, Christians are so stupid, they believe in a talking snake, as if that's the only possible thing that, that occurred to me when I was reading that. First time I read it, I was like, oh my God, a snake could talk. I can't believe it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only possible interpretation of that. Yeah, that's it. That we're just so dumb that we think snakes can talk. That's, that's the only thing going on in the text. Now, what's, what does the snake actually represent? Standard Theology 101, the snake is standing for the devil himself. And the Bible says the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field. In Peterson land, the snake represents the carnal nature. Think about it. The snake is slow to the ground, more subtle than all the beasts of the field. And it whispers to you, take of the tree, go against God. God's holding out on you. He just want, He doesn't want you to be like God. Take of the tree. Either way, either reading is not that different because in, in Christianity, there's a huge correlation between the carnal nature and the demonic. They are stand-ins often one for the other. So either reading is correct. The carnal nature whispers to us, represented by the snake. Yeah, that's the talking snake. <laughs> The carnal nature whispering to us, partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Break away from God. Break away from God. That's what the tree represents. Break away. Fall of your own volition, of your own free will, of your own choice. Fall. Start deciding for yourself right and wrong. Who cares if this is great and glorious and beautiful and wonderful? You know, God's holding out on you. That could also be seen as how our flesh talks to us, how it lies to us. Do what you want, man. Do what you want, dog. It's cool. It's cool. No one's going to find out. Ain't nobody going to know. Just do it, dude. What are you scared? See? Either way, the representation works. The fall occurs. Now, The fall also comes through the woman. Now, I would say that that makes the metaphor almost completely perfect. That the trouble comes through the woman. Are any of you married? All right, I won't even go there. I won't even go there. Okay, so never mind. So we have it all laid out for us. The tree. The tree represents, the partaking of the tree either represents the beginning of human consciousness, the, hum, the beginning of self-consciousness, or the beginning of the moral decision-making process. Those are all interrelated and they don't, they, they feed on each other and they, they complement each other. So that is all for now and I will go into this with some depth in the videos to come. And again, I strongly recommend, I strongly recommend Jordan Peterson's Map of Meaning series. Uh, the series itself is excellent. The parts where he starts talking about the Bible you know, what, what he actually does is ferret out the deep psychological insights into the Bible and what, what the actual authors of the Bible are trying to convey and what is, what is actually the meaning, the meaning, the philosophical, psychological, spiritual meaning of the text itself. And he's reading it on a much deeper level than most of your standard uh, Christian apologists. So I strongly recommend you check it out. And that is all for now. Amen.